I'm Emily Mallory of Emily's Paper Crafts, and today we're going to be working on a more complicated iris folding design, but it still uses our circle and a mixture of colors. Let's get started. Before we get started, very importantly, there's a link in the description to the pattern and some resources if this is your first time iris folding. So this card is really kind of cool because it's got a totally different iris folding pattern to it. We're actually making, in my mind, what looks more like a quilt block. And since there's no greeting, anything like that on the front of the card, we can just get started on the back side. I decided for this card, I wanted to use some reds, reds and yellows. So instead of folding over the edge like we normally would, we're actually gonna create right triangles. So I'm gonna fold over the edge, and I'm gonna fold over the other edge. So that way on the other side, all you see is a triangle. And we're gonna need eight of those. There's one. The nice thing with this pattern though is you can fold all of your triangles at the very beginning and then you're just ready to go. You don't need to leave super long tails with this because it's extra paper and it'll just add bulk to the back side of your design, which I always try to minimize thinking that I'm gonna be sending my cards through the mail and extra bulk means I might have to pay extra postage. Three. And we're just gonna make lots of right triangles with this one. Four. Five. I wonder if I can get one more out of this. Oh, yay, I can. Three, four, five, six. So two more to go. This design also works really, really well as like a Christmas ornament. If you wanted to just cut a larger circle around it and then just sort of frame it. Okay, because I am a big believer in trying to keep it as skinny as possible for the mail, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of tape there in the middle of that triangle fold area and then just tape down those two tails just so they'll stay put. It won't spring open afterward. Yes, it's a little bit more work, but it's gonna lay a lot flatter. And with this design, we're gonna be adding four layers of paper pretty much exactly on top of each other. So it's gonna get bulky pretty quickly. If you're finding that with your papers it's too bulky to just be able to put runner tape all over the back side of the card when you're finished with it, you can use some foam dimensionals to help add some height so your design won't be popping back up off of the front of your greeting card. One, two, three. I'm one short, I need to go back and make one more. Four. Okay, so this pattern probably looks a little bit messy. There's a lot of numbers and details to keep track of there. We're gonna go ahead and put tape all the way around the edge. It's gonna make it to be a very sticky mess, but I find using roller tape and dealing with a little bit of a sticky mess is a lot easier than cutting a gazillion little pieces of scotch tape to help hold down all my pieces of paper. I have seen this technique of iris folding done where you use the smooth side of your folded triangles or using the side where we taped it shut. I like the flat side better on the finished front side, but that's a personal choice. So we're gonna start with one. We're just gonna kind of tap it down. Two. And I'm already noticing I'm getting a little bit of overhang over the edge of my card front, and that's gonna be okay. That's gonna be super easy to trim when we're all done. Four. Try 
have to get my fingers into the tape because then it just goes crazy. Five. Six. I'm trying to line up the edges of my paper with the black lines. Just so it'll come out even at the end. Okay, we now have one layer done. Congratulations! Next, I'm going to move on to a gold paper with a craft background. And again, we're just going to make eight more of these triangles. Oop, I better not put it there. It might catch in the tape. Joys of making lots and lots of triangles. There's four, halfway there. tape down those tails just so it'll see a little bit flatter plus it's easier to tape down when everything below is staying flat versus popping up it's a little bit too happy there with my tape on that one to use that one first This design while it's fun, it's a little bit more time intensive because you're folding and taping every single individual piece of paper rather than just being able to tape down the whole edge of the paper all at once. Next we're going to go around and put tape on all of our red points. We're trying not to get the tape all the way over the edge of the paper that we just put down because if we do, we're going to end up having stickiness that will then transfer to the front of the card in your envelope. And that will be a very sad day when the person who gets your mail that you've specially made for them can't pull it out of the envelope because of a stray piece of tape. So do be careful when you are putting on your tape. Alrighty, time for round two. So putting that flat side down, start up here with number nine. We're just going to go all the way around, all over again. Twelve. Trying not to get caught on the sticky, so my Design moves around on me. Okay. Yay, we have two rounds done. Next, I'm going to move on to my third one, which is going to be a piece of yellow. You know what? I'm going to cut this one in half just because it's super duper wide. And the wider it is, the bigger the triangles it makes. 
and I do not need ginormous triangles. Okay, and then here we go. Trying to find the end that feels easiest to fold. I don't know why. The other end was not that, but. And then we'll just make our eight all over again. So yes, you could create all of your triangles at the very beginning and then tape them all down all at once. You get to decide what's going to be easiest and most enjoyable for you. Four. Halfway there. More tape here on our triangles. Again, just enough to hold it down is all we need. When I was selecting paper for this one, I thought how cool it would be to do yellows and oranges and then brown for the center and make it look like a sunflower. So I will have to play around with that color combination another day. All right, more tape here on what are my brown on my little brown points to help hold down the next layer. Okay, and because I moved it around a lot, we'll line it up back up with our pattern. All right, and 17 is the smallest number, so we will get started with 17. So 17, 18. With this pattern, eventually, we're gonna have to start going and alternate across the circle or the pattern so we don't end up with a weird spiraling effect with the paper. Where it'll get really, really chunky. It's already starting to happen a little bit with this layer, but it should be okay. Because the more you go around, the higher it's gonna get, but then when you go back and put on that last piece, it's gonna be really high on one side and then really low on the other. So that's why on this next round, after this one, we will alternate across the pattern. And I ended up with an extra one this time? How funny. Okay, last one. I have another red one to do for this almost center. For some reason I was drawn to reds and yellows and golds today when I was working on these.
last time of taping them together. Noisy tape dispenser today. It's feeling overworked, I guess. Okay, more tape on all of our little yellow corners. Let's see, nope, it just doesn't want to snap back together. Okay, got a little bit too close to the edge, so I'm just gonna smear it backward a little bit. Okay, and we'll reline it up with our pattern. There we go. 25 is our smallest number. So that's where we're going to start. And this time we are going to go back and forth across. Just so we can minimize the amount of height increase on the back side here. So that was 26. 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, and last one. Hooray. Okay, then I'm very carefully going to put tape here and then put the center on the back. So I'm actually just going to put tape on the topmost ones for now. And yes, my background is way bigger than the opening. Voila. Oh, I love it. It's a nice combination of reds and yellows. All right, so we have one little teeny tiny piece from that very first round that's overhanging. So we'll just take our scissors and go in and snip it, and no one will ever know. And then we'll liberally cover the back here with more tape. This one's getting close to being almost tall enough to suggest using foam dimensionals, but I think if we really layer it up with some tape, it will be fine. Which is a big part of the reason why, again, I encourage the use of taping down your tails, rather than just leaving them open. Let's see, Ooh. open, open. All right, I think it's, <laughs> I think it's covered. It's sticky if nothing else. All right, so then we're gonna take our card front. And I always find it easiest to line it up if I have the card open. And then go for those two edges. And because it's so well sticky there on the back side, there will be no forgiveness if I get this down crooked. I'll have to live with it. All right, and then I left room down here on the bottom to stamp a greeting or just leave blank. we have our finished quilted look iris folded pattern for a greeting card. Thanks so much for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you again soon.